Okay, so um, when I started teaching, I was at Caltech, and and uh, one of the great professors at Caltech was Richard Feynman, uh, the physicist, you know, Nobel Prize physicist, and so on. And at the end of every class, he had a tradition of of questions and answers, and so I did the same then for, for my classes. Uh, the, on, on the final day of class. Students wouldn't have to come if they didn't want to, but if they if they wanted to, they could they could then ask me any question. Well, the rule was actually they could ask me any question um, except religion, politics, or the final exam. <laughs> but uh, but today, there, well, there's no final exam, and and you, if you want to ask me a question about religion or politics, it's okay. But uh, although I might not be very good at answering questions of that kind. Um, but the idea is, I don't, I didn't want to come with with my agenda, but I wanted to make you happy. So, 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 uh, 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 each of you who has uh, something that you that you wonder what I might think about a certain thing, uh, this is, you know, please, uh, uh, please ask the question. I will try to answer it without uh, excessive technical jargon. I'll also try to answer it quickly. I see there's about 100 people here, and we got, I don't know, 60 minutes. Uh, so uh, if I take one minute at every question, that's 100 minutes. Uh, 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 so I, I guess I'd like to say uh, nobody should ask two questions, uh, unless we really run out. Uh, if, if you really have two questions that you you know that you need urgent answers to whisper whisper one of them to somebody else and let them ask ask it so so let's let's get started then when uh, so maybe you're more comfortable asking a question uh in swedish than in english in that case Olaf will translate it for uh for me um so let me and i'm going to try to go around uh, uh the room uh uh, you know, answering questions from each part. So raise your hand if you have a question and then I will choose uh, to go. And don't worry about being the first person. Well, if there are no questions. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> you have the, oh, 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 you're the microphone. Oh, okay, here's somebody with a question. Somebody has to okay. be first. Uh, I can start. Yeah. My name is Anders Lundqvist. Uh, okay. Just like we, we share one thing, namely interest both in computer science and music. Yes. That, uh, I assume at one time in life you had to choose between these, these two. Yes. When did that happen and why did you choose uh, computer science? Because you're very talented in music as well. Yes. Well, okay. So the question... I, I never had to choose really between computer science and music because computer science wasn't invented yet when I was uh, <laughs> when I would have to make. But I had to choose between physics and and music. Uh, but uh, that was 1950. Well, my last year of high school, 1956. Uh, I lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I don't know if there. If, how many computers there were in Milwaukee, Wisconsin at the time? It was probably one or two at the most. Um, but but uh, I had a very good physics teacher, and I also had a lot had had good music uh, uh, teachers. And I would have gone to one of one, one of two colleges. Uh, uh, in one university, I would have been a music major, and the other one physics. And and uh, uh, well, I visited the uh, I visited them both, and and the. The people at at the music one uh, emphasize how easy it would be if I go there. You know, they they said, well, you know, uh, if if you have any problems with the exams, we can, you know, you know, we can. Uh, you know, they don't grade very strict and so on. The other place, um, the physics one said, you know, uh, one out of every three students fails at this one, and so I chose that one. So, <clears throat> I have a question for, over here. Okay, so I'm, uh, you know, the concept of lifelong learning. So I'm trying to learn still, Le uh, as you know, uh, even even in this age. 
some things are easy to understand and some are extremely hard. And, and I've been grappling with, with gravity, trying to understand gravity. So my question is, is it possible to, uh, to explain Einstein's understanding of gravity to a layman such as myself? Uh, well, if it is, then someone could explain it to me. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I, 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 I did. I, I, I did know uh, very well uh, Francis. What was his last name? Uh, was Stanford professor who was in, in, uh, head of Gravity Pro B project tw twenty years ago, and and we used to go to the movies together. But I never understood Gravity Pro B. I'm sorry, um, but I know. Uh, in other words, I started in physics, but I, but I, I. I uh, I basically switched into mathematics very soon uh, because I found out that uh, although I could get get A's in my physics classes, I couldn't understand why they asked the questions that they did. But in mathematics classes, that it turned out that 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 was more close to what my brain was good at. Uh, so so I uh, I I I, uh, I you know I changed and then and then I discovered computers. Um, so so. I do, I, I do believe that that uh, people have different ways of organizing uh, organizing knowledge in in their brains, and and I I, I think uh, at the time that I was growing up, about one person in fifty had had the kind of a brain that that resonated with computing, and you know other people would resonate more with with chemistry, physics, law. Uh, poetry, whatever, um, and uh, uh, and and I I discovered that I was I, I was a computer type of a geek instead of a, instead of somebody with physics and simple, even you know in mathematics uh, I identified with algebra but not with geometry it, so I I, I, I I I tried to learn these other things uh, but I but but some of them remain difficult for, uh, for, for me. It's not a lack of motivation, but, I'll, but I think it's because of the way uh, my head works. <laughs> so so let's say that there's one person in, what, what's the population of, of Lulio? Uh, about what, 100,000? 100, yeah, 75. Seventy-five thousand. Okay. Well, so if it was a hundred thousand, there would there would be two thousand people who were who were uh, geeks like me. Okay. So seventy-five would that that makes about you know fifteen hundred people in, in Lulio were natural born uh, computer people, and and I, I, I've tried to uh, uh, to write books that are uh, that those people will really love. A question from the back. Yes. Uh, hello, I'm I'm Fredrik Bengtsson, and I usually try to teach uh, computer programming. So I'm a teacher. What do you think makes a good uh, teacher in computer science and computer programming? I'm sorry for asking such a broad question. The difference between computer science and computer programming. Yes. Yeah, well, it, it, of, of course. It, it, a rose by any other name is still a rose. There, it, there, when Edsger Dijkstra gave his Turing lecture, I think he called it something like the humble programmer. Uh, but he, he described himself as a programmer. On, on the other hand, there's no question that he was a that he was an absolute great uh, scientist. And at that time, he gave the lecture. Uh, the word programmer had low low esteem. It was somebody. That, that you could always hire, uh, but 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 didn't have any uh, creativity or uh, you know or, or elegance to, to their job, um, and so what it, so uh, when you ask about the difference between words, it, it it somehow also relates to the status of those words in in people's mind. Uh, on the other hand, if we look at what the words really mean. Um, uh, I, I, I gave a definite, I, I tried to say, what's the difference between science and art, uh, for example, um, and science. Uh, so, so, so I looked at the 
at the history of the words and the way people have have used it. And I and I found that art is is uh, in German Kunst. I don't know what is it. What is it in in, in Swedish for that word for art? Uh, the dirt. Kunst. 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 Yeah. Okay. Kunst. Is the same. So, so Kunstlich. You know, in, uh, this means something that's not in nature. Some. I mean, it it can be. It can be as it can be beautiful, aesthetic, but it also it, 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 the difference is uh, 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 w whether something w w was created by people, w which is kunst, or, or something that was created by God, or but you know, in in evolution, uh, and that's uh, and that's uh, the opposite of uh, of art in that way. So the word artificial, for example, in English. Now, now then there's the word program. Uh, uh, so, okay, so let's see. Uh, so, a program is is the is the uh, embodiment, the, the the realization of of an abstract idea called algorithm. An algorithm is something that 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 is a concept like the number two or something like that. Well, well, if if, if you write the number two down on a piece of paper, then it becomes data. And, and so, so you have the abstract thing like information, and and, and then you re represent it somehow. It becomes data. An abstract thing like an algorithm, you represent it somehow. It becomes a program. So, so a programmer is somebody who takes who who takes the idea of some computational process and and makes a concrete representation of that process. Um, Art is something that's not. That, uh, I'm sorry. So, so science is, is the other word I didn't define. So, so, so science is something that we are, that we understand, and uh, and so it, when you turn, uh, I like to say when when you when you turn an art into a science, it, it's it, it's taking something. Uh, it, it, it's when you understand it well enough to explain it to a computer. It's something, what's, what's the difference between an art and science? It, it, it's, it, it's when when I can make an algorithm that explains that explains something. But 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 if I can't explain it to a computer, that's where the human being is still needed, and that's art. Okay, that's so. I wrote my book called "The Art of Computer Programming," and it's it, it, even though even though science advances every year, and, and we learn more and more about how to write computer programs, for example, art also advances and gets ahead of it, and so so people can still go beyond what we know how to explain to compu computers. There's a question here. <clears throat> and, hello, my name is Michael, and I did my thesis work uh, back in the days, my master's thesis on... I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not hearing you well. Yeah, okay, uh, my name is Michael, and I did my master's thesis back in the days on graph isomorphism. And I wonder, uh, how hard do you think graph isomorphism is as a problem, and what's the relation between how hard B do and I think what? So, I, 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 I'm not getting it. So. I wonder about graph isomorphism. Graph isomorphism? Yes, yeah. as a problem. And how hard do you think that is? Oh, the, well, um, uh, Lhatsi Babai has just uh, proved that it's not uh, that it's not an NP. <laughs> that that is that that it is definitely simpler than. I mean, it's not NP complete. That that uh, if if you solve the graph isomorphism pro problem, then then that doesn't mean that I could solve the traveling salesman problem. Um, and, and, but I'm not sure exactly how much more he proved. I think he used advanced group theory to 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 get an upper bound on how hard the graph isomorphism problem is. The graph isomorphism problem is. Uh, by the way, it, it, uh, the idea of a graph is that you have a, you, somebody gives you a bunch of points and, and, and any certain pairs of points 
are connected, other pairs are not connected. And, and I, can, I can draw two, I, I can, somebody gives me a, a, a graph over here that has 100 points and some connection between them. Another person gives me another graph, another 100 points, uh, connections between them and says, uh, is there a way to renumber the, the, uh, the vertices uh, so that actually these two are exactly the same graph? And um, uh, most of the graphs that I've ever seen in my life, it was easy to answer this question. But there are some graphs that uh, it's very hard to decide whether they're different because there's so much symmetry involved that you can't, that, that, that I could, you know, I, I try to associate this point with any one of these 100 points over here, and all of them still look the same. And, I, and, I, and, I, and so, so every once in a while you get to a, uh, some, some graphs that are very hard to decide, are they the same or different? Um, and uh, uh, so pe people worried. It was one of the main open problems in computer science for a long time uh, as, as to wh whether that was really a hard problem or not. Um, uh, and and, and Babai showed that it actually isn't as hard as the, as, as the hardest ones. <clears throat> and, and that was a year or two ago, professor at Chicago. <clears throat> Uh, hi. Uh, okay, so my, my name is Håkan Jonsson, and I have, uh, well, okay. I just had to ask you about uh, the current situation with the P equals NP question. Do, can you shed any light on that problem? From which question? P equals NP. P equals NP, okay. So, so this, is, this is the million dollar problem of, of theoretical computer science. So, so, so P is the class of problems that can be solved, yeah, for which we can write a program that solves the problem in polynomial time. Polynomial time means that uh, if, if, if the length of the problem is N, uh, then uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the time to solve the problem, the problem of size N, is less than or equal to n to the constant for some constant. So, you know, there exists a C so that the time to solve the, pro the problem is less than some power C. And, the, and so, so the, the set of all problems for which this is true is called P. And okay, then. Um, there's another class of problems. Okay, okay. Then there's another class of problems called NP, non-deterministic polynomial time. Uh, and intuitively, it means that if I, what, what, one way to look at it is, it is imagine that we that we have uh, uh, a, a billion people on Earth, and we give each of them this problem. But each of them, each of them follows a different branch of the problem, uh, and and uh, if 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 any of if any of the people are able to solve it uh, within time end of the C, that person raises his hand and says, "Yes, I've got the answer," and and uh, 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 that's different from saying that. That 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 all that, that the entire, that we have just one person working on the problem and solving it. So so if we imagine the problem can be split into many different paths, and each of these paths, uh, so some of the paths are going to be fruitless, but other, but 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 on on at least one path, somebody's going to get the answer within this much of time. That problem is NP. So that so that's a much larger class of problem. Uh, uh, for example. Uh, if I want, if I ask a problem about uh, uh, whether a graph has a Hamiltonian path, uh, a Hamiltonian path in, in a graph is, is a path that goes through all points of the graph uh, exactly once. And, and each time you go from a point to another point that, that it's connected to. And so, so, so uh, uh, nobody, no, nobody knows whether that problem is in P. As far as we know, you have a you have a big graph. There's no constant that we can always say 
I mean, for every, we haven't got any algorithm that'll say you always, uh, within n to the one millionth steps, it'll say yes, there's a Hamiltonian path or not. But it's easy to uh, to, to just try all, all possible all, all possible routes routes through the graph, and and, and uh, 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 you, you start at vertex one, and if it's connected to vert, you have various other things you could do for the next step, and then you could go to another step and do another step, and 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 you never repeat the place you're going. And so if so if uh, if there's a Hamiltonian path, actually, you, by the time you've gone through all vertices, uh, you'll know, uh, and, and you'll say yes, there's a Hamiltonian path. And so that's NP. Easy to show that that's an NP. Okay. Now there are other ways to describe NP, but it, but the intuition is uh, a lot of the problems that we solve all the time are based on this branching structure. Try something, but we don't know which way to go. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and so if if all of these all of these problems could be solved in polynomial time. Uh, that that would be, be be pretty cool because we could uh, we could do a lot more than we know now. So so people set this up as a as a problem, and they started to uh, to say, well, if if a problem is in P, it's easy. Um, uh, and, and unfortunately, they were mistaken <clears throat> because for for two reasons. One is if this constant is, if C is is large, uh, it it doesn't help you at all, because it, because if C is is, is uh, let's say, a hundred, uh, then then you can't solve the problem when n is three. Three of the one hundred is more than the you know the length the microseconds in the age of the universe or something like this. You know, so so just having a constant doesn't mean that it's good. So, so, so people, uh, when they when they when they say the polynomial time, they really mean a small constant uh, uh, exponent. Now, on the other hand, um, people say, well, uh, the, the the question though is whether or not all of these are the, are really the same, and and. Uh, so, so let, let's let's forget that that p really means usable or efficient. Let's just say, let's just go back to this definition and say at least there is a polynomial. Maybe it's maybe it's a bad polynomial, not a helpful polynomial. But at least, what about this question? Are are these problems really different from these problems? They, they certainly seem to be, as far as we know. And uh, and there uh, we get to another very interesting point is that. The difference between existence and real realization, existence and embodiment. So, so it might be that somebody can prove. In fact, I I, I tend to suspect that within the next hundred years, somebody will prove that for all of these all of these problems in NP that can also be solved. Uh, it, 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 I, I, they also are, are polynomial time set, satisfiable in the sense that there does exist some constant for each problem in NP. Um, however, I think th that person will also prove that we, we don't know what the constant is. We only know what, that it exists. And so we, 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 have, we won't know the algorithm. We won't know the method. We'll just know that if, you know, if we were infinitely wise, then then uh, then and we had an infinite amount of time, and then we eventually find a met, find the method. So, so so just knowing that it exists means that it's in P. But but knowing what the algorithm is 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 what the people what 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 we can use in life. And, and so um, uh, I. I, I Everything I know is consistent with this idea. So, so there's already a problem like this where we, where, where we do know a problem that is in P, but we, but we don't know what the algorithm is. And and this comes from a uh, from a famous uh, Robinson. Uh, 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 gosh, what? Uh, 
uh, Robinson and Seymour uh, have, have a theory about uh, about graph theory of so, so that any minor closed family of graphs, uh, there, there's a polynomial time algorithm to test whether or not a given graph belongs to that uh, to that family. So, so uh, <clears throat> it's a technical term, but a minor closed family of graphs, for example, stands for, for, for includes the idea of of, of planar graphs, a, a graph that you can draw on a blackboard without crossing lines. <clears throat> uh, so. So, well, we, we do know if somebody gives us a, a graph that has a bunch of points and, and connection between it, we can decide whether or not there's a way to draw it without crossing lines. Um, uh, and that's an example of a minor closed family of graphs. Um, uh, however, uh, uh, I guess I should say what it means to be minor minor closed family and 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 so that you, you define a class of graphs where, where you say that if i if i erase any 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 point and, and everything connected to that point then it's also a graph in the family or if i take two points and i collapse them together into one point that's also a graph in the family and this is true of, of the planar graphs if i erase a, any point of a planar graph it's still planar if if i collapse any two points together any two adjacent points together, um, it stays plain. So, so um, uh, my, but minor closed fam uh, graphs, uh, uh, there's a huge number of these. And, and uh, almost none of them do we know uh, an algorithm to test whether or not it belongs to that family of graphs. On the other hand, Roberts and Seymour showed it's always polynomial. But, they, but their proof does not tell us what the polynomial is. It just says that there is some polynomial out there, and it might be this number C might be what might be ten to the 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 ten. To the, uh, the number of steps ten would be ten to the ten to the ten to the ten to the. Ten. Uh, the finite numbers are can get so big that they're incomprehensible, <clears throat> and therefore knowing that there's a polynomial time algorithm tells us really nothing practical. It, 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 but mathematically, it's very interesting. It means that we can't prove that there isn't a, 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 a okay. That was a longer, longer answer, but I thought it was, it's kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Jacob Nielsen, PhD student here. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking, uh, it seems that when I've heard about you, that you can solve almost any problem that you set out to solve. Like, how do you how, how do you go ahead and when you try to solve like problems like what's your way of how, thinking? how do I try to solve a problem okay yeah. well um, I, I, I try pencil and paper I try small cases I and I almost always write that almost always suggests a computer program that I can write in order to in order to experiment with it so I so, so I, I try to learn the territory. I try, I, I, I try to consider special cases of the problem that I know how to solve, and and then I try to go a little further. Uh, I, I, I try to, um, uh, if the problem depends on a parameter n, I, 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 I try. Some some people look first at n equals a million, but I. I tend to look first at n equals one or two, maybe n equals zero, but but I want but but I, but I want to get it firmly in mind what what it is, and then I then I try to see well, uh, what, what if I play around with this problem? What if I change? What if I have a solution to uh, 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 to a smaller problem? Can I put those solutions together to get a solution to the bigger one? But I'm but I'm but I'm always trying to get data. Uh, so I know some things that are true about the thing I'm working on, some things that are false that I'm working on. And I ask questions. All, I mean, you, your job today is ask me questions. My job doing research is to ask questions. And I'm always asking questions, uh, you know, learning, learning how to ask, ask questions that gets you involved with the problem. And then, and so you ask lower level questions in order to ask, answer answer bigger level question. 
and I tend to write about five programs a week. Some some of these programs are trivial, but but other ones some, sometimes it, it you know it might be a twenty page program something like that. Um, but uh, 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 at the end of twenty seventeen, I I, I I I could look at my you know the, my computer. Uh, I just look at the names of the programs and I, I think that I wrote during the year, and it come out came out to about five a week. <clears throat> now, let's see, I haven't had any questions from the last row. Does anybody in the last row? Or do you? Yeah, here we go. Some people sit in the last row be, because they don't think they'll be called on. <clears throat> uh, okay, so. Building on to the last question, uh, in my quest to not ask a stupid question, I looked at your website, uh, and under the frequently asked questions, I stumbled upon CWeb and uh, the web application for uh, literate programming. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I realized that a lot of these older specialized tools have turned into sort of more generic tools with the advent of, of uh, the web browser and HTML. And so I thought about uh, if specialized tools for literate programming are still needed and uh, what you think the future of literate programming is. Okay. So um, it, it, the reason I could count how many programs I, uh, I wrote last year was because I just had to go through and find out how, how many files had a dot w in their name because because this is the in, this identifies the program in, in the cweb language now cweb is a is a pre is a preprocessor uh, that that has to that combines uh, c and tech so so, so we have a dot w file and and then I have a, a program that that will take this uh, so let's call this foo dot w and then out, out comes foo dot c which will run and then I have another processor we'll take this into foo dot tech and this is and this is a file that I can that I that I can make a listing from and and, and, and see what it's doing and um I find that this is so much better than any other way of programming that uh, uh, th th that I um, uh, my wife will tell you that I often uh, will come out of my room and I'll say programming in CWeb is is such fun. I mean, it, uh, so 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 you can't expect me to give a neutral. Uh, uh, answer to saying, do I think literate programming is good or bad? Because I just can't understand why uh, well, why it isn't the greatest invention ever. Um, on, on the other hand, I, I know that uh, tech has millions and millions of users. CWeb has maybe I don't know. Well, it's, okay. Tens of thousands of users. Um, now, your question was about having better environments for for for, for learning programs. CWeb is uh, when I write a program in CWeb, I live with its limitations because CWeb is a very is a very uh, light. Uh, it, it, uh, um, it, it, I didn't go to great lengths to uh, to keep. Uh, changing it all the time and get more users want more more features this has been frozen for years and years um, and so at the beginning of a CWeb program I, I I I have some boilerplate that I always write like I start out and I say uh, at sign star I think is a introduction or something like that and then and then later on, I, I have at sign star index. And, and I sort of type that all the time. Uh, because if I didn't type, it, 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 if I didn't type that, 
uh, uh, then maybe the index wouldn't look as nice in the format. Uh, so, 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 so as I'm doing this, I, I, I live with some of the, I mean, at, uh, the, the idea of CWeb is that you describe your whole program as a bunch of, uh, of short modules that are each connected to other modules in, in, a, in a simple way. And some of the modules have a star on them, meaning that that is so, sort of starts a major part of your program, and and it appears neither way. Anyway, the, the, there are various aspects of CWeb that could obviously be, be improved, and they could be put into fancy programming environments that include debuggers and all kinds of extra extra bells and whistles. And I believe that that more people who use literal programming, they'll develop such tools. But but for me, just using the bare Raw stuff is enough to get what done. What I what I did, so so I never took it further. Um, the uh, 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 I, I have a book called uh, the Stanford Graph Base, uh, which is online. Uh, but but actually, there's nice paperbacks, <laughs> nicely printed, and, and and this book contains. Uh, I don't know, but about three dozen that, uh, examples of, of CWeb programs that, that deal with graph theory. And the programs run six to ten pages typically. And uh, each of those uh, can be considered as, as a model of what I think is, 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 is a pretty good uh, pretty good program. But the, but, but the advantage of, of this way of programming is, is that the, uh, uh, I find that uh, I can program faster, I can debug faster, I can maintain better, uh, and and I and whatever is second best is way worse than this. Now, why doesn't the whole world change over to CWeb? And um, I believe that there's two answers to that. One is that um, uh, uh, the programs. The, the way that most programmers uh, work is it, it's it, it's not as good as CWeb, well, but it's it's good enough uh, uh, to get a lot of work done. And so, uh, in, in a way, uh, you, you might say Esperanto is a much better language than English. But but I don't see people ever switching over from English to Esperanto. Um, and so, CWeb is much better than C, but just because it's better doesn't mean that everybody's going to switch. Um, uh, I, I, however, once you're addicted to it, uh, then you, you uh, there's no going back. I think. Um, <clears throat> now the other the other reason was something John Bentley uh, uh, pointed out to me, and that is uh, a lot of programmers don't like to explain what, what don't like to document their program. They, they don't like to make their program uh, readable. They take uh, it, so. I said earlier that maybe two percent of the world it, it got, it was born to be a great programmer. Well, maybe another two percent of the world was born to be a great writer. And so, in order to enjoy CWeb, maybe you have to be in both of those groups. Um, anyway, there are some uh, uh, there's some truth to that, and it's hard for you know since I I can't speak for for, for, for a psychologist, but but, but anyway, I, I I do know that the more like uh, if if uh, Microsoft would throw away all its programs and start over again with CWeb, we would have much better operating system. <clears throat> okay. Another question up there. <clears throat> Uh, hi, uh, you may have answered this actually. Excuse with me, the, but I, I was pointing to the guy in the second last row. But he, we'll go, that, okay. that, you, you, you may have answered the question uh, in the last one, but I was just wondering about of, of, of the hundreds or, or thousands of algorithms or, or tools you, you've made in your career, which are you most proud of and, and, and why? <laughs> okay, now, just before, just before this lecture, uh, there was a TV crew here saying, which kind of questions do you not like to get? <laughs> um, and you know, it's like ask, it's like asking a mother who, who which of your children is, is you know is is the best. And so, uh, 
uh, I, uh, so, so each each of the things that that I'm that I that, that I had, had good luck with uh, had, had a different part of my my heart somehow. Um, uh, but uh, so I. I uh, I, so, so I find that you know I, I came up with a bunch of ideas that that weren't so, that weren't so great, but other ones that I you know I'm really happy when when somebody 30 years later starts to get it and understand why you know why why it was important to me at that time, um, and so uh, uh, I go, you know I go and and read something that I did 30 40 years ago and I say oh I'm glad I wrote that. Um, and 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 I look at other things and I say, why was I so stupid? Um, but but I but my goal all the time was to sort of uh, do what I felt was best at the time, rather than what I felt uh, uh, my peers were asking me to do. Uh, so so I I, uh, I I I do think it's important for each for, for each of you not to do something because you, you think somebody else uh, wants you to do it a certain way but 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 to to keep doing the work that you that that you, that you think you were destined to do or that you know that 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 comes from your own experiences as, as to the best way to go and, and sometimes it'll it, it'll be something that you're proud of later um and, and and but as long as as long as you keep keep trying and not not worrying about uh uh, uh, like somebody said, he didn't want to ask a stupid question. Well, don't worry about asking a stupid question. It's, it's, it, uh, it's, it, 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 if a question occurs to you, then somebody else is probably has the same question, and and uh, you, so you don't have to uh, have to worry about asking it. I, I ask uh, I, I ask questions all the time, uh, not worrying about whether or not. Uh, I mean, if the, if the question is really in my mind, I don't mind. I, I don't. I, I don't worry that somebody knows that I didn't know the answer to it. <clears throat> but now, what what was your question up there in the second last row? <clears throat> what makes for a good teacher, specifically a teacher of computer science or programming? What what makes what? For a good teacher. A good T-shirt. Of computer program. Oh, computer programs. Okay, so hmm, my hey, that's a that's certainly a, a, a great question. Whoa! My my at the at my birthday party, my son was wearing a T-shirt that that was that was for mathematicians. It was something like, um, okay, something like I am square root of one plus tangent squared. Um, and you were supposed to know enough trigonometry to know that this means I am sexy. <laughs> I mean, this is this equals secant of C. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but uh, so, so now I'm trying to think of a T-shirt that would be the analog, right? <laughs> for, for, for... I was actually asking about a teacher, like learning. Teacher. Oh, a teacher. Oh, hey. You know, uh, but I like the other question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, uh, a, a good way to teach computer programming. Uh, uh, okay. Well, it's, so, so certainly you need to uh, you need to have uh, lots and lots of examples and trying to. to uh, so that people can uh, can always practice and, and whatever you're, whatever you're uh, whatever you're teaching it, it you know it, you don't want to just have people memorize how to how to pass a test but but they they should know how to actually uh, get something done and and, and 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 try enough stuff so that they make errors and so that they can learn from their mistakes uh, but now. Um, uh, I, 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 so I guess uh, uh, 
w one of the things that you want to do is is introduce students as, as soon as possible to uh, to actually interacting with machine and de and debugging getting getting mistakes out of their uh, out of their program because that's that's a big part of it um, but at a, at a higher level what is it that makes that that makes a, a, a programming different from other things in the world um, and and what it is what can, can we can we pinpoint what is the the, the skill that we really want to develop the fact that, that distinguishes uh, uh, the, the great programmers from the ordinary ones and i tend to think that it's uh, uh, the ability to uh, to, to understand different levels of abstraction. <clears throat> so I'll try to explain what I mean by different levels of abstraction. Uh, uh, so, so you have at the lowest, at, 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 well, not the absolute low, at, at the lowest, do we have an eraser? I, I, I wrote more than I thought I would. Oh yeah, over here. Yeah. Okay, so, so at, at the lowest level, uh, we have uh, electrons moving or something moving around, but I'm not going down to the low. I, I, I'm going down to, to the level of uh, of a machine organization w w where we have some s some uh, r registers in a machine that contain binary numbers. Um, and so at the you're going to leave sexy on there. To, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so that <laughs> But but that's a good homework problem for everybody. Design a great T-shirt for computers. <laughs> okay, so 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 down here we have uh, uh, we, we have the have the bit level, and I have have some binary numbers, and uh, 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 and these numbers are being added together or manipulated in some way. Um, at at the top level, we have a pro uh, uh, we have a problem that we that we want to solve, like. Uh, um, uh, find a Hamiltonian path or something like that. Um, uh, okay, then th th then we convert this into something like uh, you know uh, try c connecting um, uh, uh, x one to x two. <laughs> Uh, or something like that. Uh, at, at, it, that then uh, we have a program that goes between the, these high level uh, uh, things that, like this will reduce to, I, 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 there, was, there was actually make the X, I, and J here. And somewhere we decided a good value of I and J that we would want to try. And, and and then doing this, the, we would change our representation of what we have so far, so we know some some things have been joined together, and uh, and, and therefore uh, 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 it'd be good uh, to try certain certain things. Uh, uh, I don't want to go into details of Hamiltonian path, but I want to give you the idea of levels of abstraction. So 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 then uh, that turns out to be. Uh, that turns out to uh, to be represented as a subroutine inside of a computer, and 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 we can uh, uh, we can stop every time we look at the subroutine and see and see how it's going. We can see what subroutine called that subroutine, and uh, so in order to be a good programmer, you have to understand all of these levels. You have to un understand what it would look, what the registers are going to look like somehow, where, where things are in memory. And you also have to keep your, whole, your, your problem at the top level in your mind. And a, good, and a good programmer learns how to go seamlessly, effortlessly from low to high and back again without, without knowing that, that they're doing it. And, that's, and so anything I can do when I'm teaching that would improve the student's skills at that, uh, I think is an advantage. And so that's why in my books, I, 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 I give, I, I, I don't stay at, at only at the high level, but I, but I try to move, move also uh, to a machine level uh, fairly often so that people can keep, uh, can keep developing their, their, their skills of uh, <laughs> jumping level. All right, now I haven't done anything from the right wing here for a while. 
Right, is there anybody on this side has questions? Here we go. We're in the middle. That's okay. Uh, hello, good day. Uh, I'm not a programmer. Please explain me in five sentences what is a cryptocurrency. In five sentences, explain to me what? Yeah, what is a cryptocurrency? What is a? What is the cryptocurrency? Crypto money. Cryptocurrency. Yeah. Oh, okay. In five sentences. Okay. Or six. All right. In, in, in five sentences, cryptocurrency is the latest uh, Ponzi scheme. <laughs> 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 You know, a Ponzi scheme is where all the first inventors, investors, uh, uh, are successful because because they get other people to invest in it, and then eventually everybody realizes that everybody in the world can't become a, you know, can't win all the time. Um, okay, but but uh, but, but a, no, a, a, a cryptocurrency is, is is a currency based on on uh, uh, computer algorithms that allow someone to prove that you that you own some money uh, in a way that that nobody can uh, can fake uh, and and the way they the way it's constructed uh, is is essentially uh, if you can imagine accountants uh, like in Charles Dickens' story about Mr. Cratchit. Uh, anyway, somebody keeping record, uh, but the computer keeps records that are, uh, and, and and all of the records that have ever been done since the, since day zero of the of the cryptocurrency. All of these records, I, I I've used more than five sentences. Excuse me. Um, uh, all of these records uh, uh, are, are there, and and each of each and anybody can look at these. And, and verify that nobody cheated. Uh, now, how do they do that? Uh, well, they decide to uh, to use electricity, and and uh, and 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 they, they they use computational processes that that in order to uh, uh, in order to prove that uh, that that you've checked it, uh, you solve a problem that cannot be solved fast. Uh, and, and the faster you can solve the problem. Uh, the more cryptocurrency you can you can make, um, and so <clears throat> right now they say that the amount of electricity that's used in order to check these things is is uh, approximately the amount of electricity used by Ireland, uh, and so it and so if anybody wants a green planet, uh, then we're going to have to figure out. Uh, <laughs> you know, okay, so uh, you might guess that I'm not a big fan of cryptocurrency uh, <laughs> because um, all it does is move money from one person's pocket to another. It doesn't really advance the state of the world in any way that's useful. So, so um, but, uh, but it is a way of doing it. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Uh, my name is Aaron Midvors, and uh, by all accounts, you seem to be a very uh, multifaceted person. So I'm a what? I, multifaceted. Uh, Mostly, I'm. A, a, you, you have I, a broad I, I love compliments. Say it yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and and uh, so I wonder, do you feel there is any field that computer science student uh, should study that doesn't have an apparent connection to the computer science curriculum? Well, uh, it's it, yeah. Com computer programs are so are so uh, versatile that that really uh, uh, um, I, I I find it's hard to go to sleep. With, uh, at night, because I can think of if, if I could only stay awake, I could use, I could write a program to solve some other problem that I see. I mean, it it it, it it's very and 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 even like things that don't involve don't obviously involve computation um, are 
this week we were we, we, we were playing some music. And so I use computers to help uh, uh, to help write music, but but it, what, but I didn't even I, I don't even use the com computer to actually get the music out. I use the computer uh, the idea of a computer in order to learn music. So I try to explain what I mean by that. Uh, it, it, take any anything you want to try to learn. Uh, try to 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 imagine what it would be like uh, teaching that subject to a computer. Uh, because because in the process of, try, of of saying could I program that like take music could, could I just, could I write a program that that the input is a bunch of notes and the output is yes look that's that's a beautiful melody or, or no it's not a beautiful melody uh, ask yourself that question of, or do these notes make nice chords uh, the, the the whole theory of harmony is is an attempt to discuss which which chords are, which are what are chords what are discords, but 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 the textbook will only tell you what uh, some theory. If you look at it from the programming standpoint, you would say, well, can I make an algorithm that would actually that would actually uh, do that theory? Now, as you as you write that program, you realize how incomplete all the textbooks are. Um, and, and whatever subject you're studying, mu music, chemistry, physics, whatever, uh, it, it, if, you, if you try to look at it for, from the point of view of, of explaining the knowledge at, at, at the level uh, of, that, that it would work in an algorithm that a computer could get it, then you're learning it, you're learning uh, uh, yourself better than, than if you're trying to explain it to, a, to another human being. Uh, the computer never nods and says, "Yes, I get it." The, the human being uh, he, uh, is is not a, a, as good a, um, a, a a test. So, so whenever you're trying to learn something, uh, if you try to program it, uh, then you know what you don't know uh, much better than any any other way. Away. So, uh, uh, but but then uh, now computers are so powerful. We we can go and. And, and 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 use them to do th things that we never would have believed before. Um, and of course, the, the, unfortunately, there's also criminals out there who are doing the same thing, and that's a problem. Uh, but I don't want to hand, handicap everybody by uh, for, for, from using a powerful tool just because the tool can be misused. Um, uh, but I, I, I have serious worries about uh your know, drones and things that that uh, uh the, 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 okay T technology is getting so, so good now that it, that it becomes cheaper and cheaper to do bad things and uh, and i don't know how, how long the world can stand that um <clears throat> okay we're, we're getting towards the end but <clears throat> yeah i'd like to ask you one question the final question yeah Tell us something that intrigues you going forwards. You for, intrigues you personally going, forward. going forwards from here. Well, me, me personally, you mean? Yes. Well, okay. So, uh, like, what am I going to do when I get home? <laughs> and the answer is, I'm going to. I okay. So, so I, I've been writing a part of the art of computer programming now that is that is uh, especially fun because it it deals with with puzzles. And uh, uh, that there's something about puzzles that that uh, has always fascinated me and and millions of other people. Uh, and now I have computer methods that that allow me to solve puzzles that I never could could do before. And so so right now I'm I'm, I'm writing a section of the book about a, 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 a data structure called dancing links. And this is. This is a way of storing information that that is particularly good at something like Sudoku or, 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 or many other puzzles. Put put, put put words together in in certain ways. Put um, uh, it applies to to other things for which people pay money too. Uh, but but uh, but I presented it in my book in terms of puzzles because the, because the puzzles are something that's easy to understand and easy to explain. Um, and so I so I've got uh, 
I, I, I found during the last year that that this this technique of dancing links is much more powerful than I than I realized before, and so and so uh, I, I I'm I'm now able to uh, to, to find beautiful patterns that <laughs> that I never dreamed uh, I'd be able to investigate. So, so that particular intrigues me, and uh, and and I've I've, I've got online. Uh, a draft of what I've been working on. In fact, this morning in my hotel room, I I changed my news page from 19, 2017 to 2018, and uh, and for the first time I, I've got a link to uh, uh, to the to, to my preliminary write up about dancing links. So if you if you go to my web page and go to and then go it, uh, then it says recent news. Uh, and you'll find dancing links on that page, and you can click on something there, and you'll find 100 pages of, of, of what's really turning me on at the moment. I think it's it's really fun stuff. <clears throat> well, and believe me, I didn't ask him to ask that question, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm glad you did. <laughs> Is there any other question you would like to have been asked? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said that was the last uh, one. No, I, I, I actually didn't. Yeah, okay. We didn't discuss it before, but is there any question that yeah, you like yeah. to have? Yeah, okay. So, well, um, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know the answer. Okay. <laughs> but, it's, but I guess my answer is I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. This was yeah. absolutely awesome. Yeah.